and welcome to another session of my live show. Hang on while I get my little, I don't know that I can get that out of there. Well, you're either going to get, you are either going to get my thermostat or this enormous plant. Hello, everyone. Today, I am talking about a topic I had no idea. This is such a big deal for so many of you. Oh, my goodness. This is when you've got something with somebody and not working out. You know it's not working out. You've tried to walk away. Maybe they dumped you. Maybe you walked away from them because you had to. But they keep after you. They don't let you go. And it gets worse and worse. And for all of your efforts to try to move on, they're making it impossible. And you know why you're stuck? We're going to talk today about the glitch, why you're stuck, because you know you should move on and you know why they're not good for you and you know why they're not giving you what you want. But what's happening is you are stuck in hope. You're remembering that time when they were good. You're hoping maybe, maybe they'll change. Maybe, maybe they'll discover that I am the one. Maybe they'll actually invest in the relationship. Maybe they'll leave their partner. Maybe they'll leave their husband. Maybe they'll leave their wife. Maybe they'll finally know it's me, right? That's the trap. Welcome, B and Gwyneth, my wonderful moderators. And I want to remind all of you, I'm going to do the best I can in the time that we have together here, reading your questions. If you have a question, put it in super chat. We will get to you. But here's the thing. If you really want my opinion, book a session, go to the consultation page. It's just, it's like I can do so much in a small amount of time and I am having fewer and fewer sessions available. If you have looked, you realize there'll be weeks where you don't have me at all because I am phasing out of the one-on-ones. I'll always have them and I'll have a day with Susan, but I want you all to know that there'll be fewer of these because I've made a radical decision to have a personal life. Oh my God. I want to have a personal life. I'll be traveling the world. I'll be meeting clients in foreign countries, but I'm going to be having more uh, group courses and master classes. So I'm going to free up my time to actually go to the gym again, not just once every week or 10 days. So book a session. If you're in New York City, make sure you see me. It is, I'm taking you to the best club in New York City. It is. I mean, it is so fancy, it is so chic, but it's so comfortable. It's a beautiful experience. And for those of you who've come, I can offer this to you. It is magnificent. So let us start today. I'm going to read this. <laughs> Nika's snoring. She's doing those little doggy noises. I think she's, I don't know, chasing bunnies in her dream or something like that. I'm going to read this from Mel, and I'm really excited because Mel, I believe, is showing up today. All right? So Mel writes, Hi, Susan. I've been binge watching your videos, and I love the insightful advice you give. I'm six months out of a breakup with a married man. I tried to end things twice, but he wouldn't accept it. Then he broke up with me due to constant fighting yet has continued to reach out to me every month or so. I've asked him to let me go, but he continues to reach out and it's painful and it keeps me stuck. Now, I want you to look at the architecture of this design, all right? For those of you out there who might be quick to pull the trigger to judge, I'm gonna tell you one thing about judging. If you judge something, like, it's not my preference to be involved with somebody married. I have not done it, but I cannot judge it. You know why? The minute I judge it, don't you know, I'll find somebody who lies to me. I'll find somebody who tells me they're separated. I'll find somebody who tells me that they just live with their wife to raise the kids, but they're done and they have separate, you know, lives and she has a boyfriend or whatever. Please, 
listen to the construct, okay? Many of you have been writing me. I can see that Jillian is here. She's been taking care of everyone. Gnarly Cat is here saying hi to everyone. Carrie Photo, I just responded to her today on Instagram. Mystic Manification is here. Jenny, um, thanks for all your videos. They're so applicable to my love life or lack thereof. And your videos are what get me through hard times and these men who keep breaking my heart. Just so you know, heartbreaking is an equal opportunity <laughs> event, men, women, everything, okay? Uh, let's see what else. And we had somebody at the top of the hour here who was chiming in, and Jill Omar was here. 1999, okay, what do we have here? Who is this? Let me see. Um, Lil Loon, 1999, thank you, love. Do you have a question for us? If so, you can put it in Super Chat, and I really appreciate this. So let me deconstruct, honey, if you have a question, um, put it into Super Chat and we will find it. Gwyneth and B are so amazing with this. Oh, I love you, that's all. Mwah. Love you too, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. Jillian, $5, thank you, my dear. A breakup is a breakup, whether they accept it or not, period, end. Getting back together is an entirely separate issue from the breakup. Honey, thank you, I love it. Yeah, you know, Jillian's here half hour before while I'm in the bathroom trying to make my hair fluff and put on makeup and she's handling people's emotions, which I love. I love all of you as my audience. I know that you are the brightest and the best in all of you too. I know, I know, I have the audience, it's the best. So let's talk about how this happens and why you think they won't let you go, right? So there's what they're doing then I have to be fair, I have to tell you what you're doing, right? Okay, so first of all, this whole thing is, you know, they're not helping you in any way. And let me be very clear, the person who didn't want you, couldn't be with you, either dumped you, but whatever it is, they can't be with you, right? They can't be with you. They don't get to reserve your heart. No, 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 no. Not allowed, not allowed. They don't get to reserve your time and they don't get to reserve your hope. They don't get that right. They have not earned it. They have proved conclusively throughout time that they are incapable of handling you properly, which is why you clawed your way out of that leg hold trap and limped away to save yourself. And if they could have done better, they would have done better. And if they loved you more, they would have acted like it. And there is no excuse. This can't is either manufactured for their convenience in lies and deception and half-truths, or it is an excuse that has some validity and they've grabbed onto it to make you feel good. You know, they go, oh, my job, we just, uh, I'm just at the beginning of my career, I can't possibly move, I'm taking care of a sick mother, blah, 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 blah. Or I can't do this, I can't, or I'm, I'm too wounded to be in a relationship. I love that one. I'm too wounded. I know I'm so wounded, but I'm going to involve myself with you, have sex with you, just to use you. And then when you actually want to do something with it, I'm going to tell you, oh, I'm too wounded. That part, I'm too wounded to do. Got you there. Yeah, did that, didn't I? Okay, what do we have here? <laughs> okay, so, oh, they're rolling in now. Nafthusa, adore you. Hi, honey, $2. There's a big difference between love and ego. Okay, so now, let us deconstruct this person that you have allowed into your heart and take a serious look at what's up with them, right? Maybe they didn't love you enough. Maybe... They can't love at all. Maybe they can love somebody, but they've chosen not to love you. Whatever it is, it's not working. So after you have tried everything, please understand that this is the most manipulative, cruel, selfish act that person could take. And as you look at them, and what you wanted from them, and the fact that they keep clawing at you and don't let you escape, it's emotional, psychological abuse. I don't have any other word for it. 
they they aren't going to offer you what you want, but they're not going to let you free. I mean, you're you're like a victim. You're trapped. And and don't think you can't walk away. Of course, they don't want to let you walk away. They they're going to keep you on simmer. Just in case they want a little revisit, need a little boost to their ego, as Nafuza said, yeah, they want to feel good about themselves. I want to tell you a story about people that make you hang on. I was thinking about this when I was getting ready. There, I, I met this lovely man uh, who was my mother's doctor at the time. Young guy, good looking, nice guy. And he had a new wife and they got married fairly quickly. But he'd lived with a lady, wonderful girl, five years. All she wanted was to get married. You know, it was one thing after the next and one thing after the next. And then he's on a business trip, meets this lady, blown away by her authority, her decisiveness, and her like, yeah, I need this, this, and this. And that. Ended up marrying her. Quite frankly, it was the worst decision of his life. She's a, she's a nightmare. But the, the truth of this is, it's a very hard reality. And I want to spin the best possible version for you to hear. But honestly, there are people who will tread water with you because you're good, you're close, but you're not exactly it. And I cannot sugarcoat this because until you see through that, you'll think they're wonderful and you will think there's something wrong with you. It's not that there's something wrong with you. You're not lacking. It's just that whatever it is, this thing they think they want, they think they need, that you keep trying to jump through hoops to make them see that you've got the potential to give to them, if they don't see it and they're taking this long to figure it out, that's a no. And you should respect yourself enough to leave. And Mel, if you come here, please uh, let us know because I'm not sure. Um, oh, so th this person says, I was finally able to block my MM yesterday Based on Susan's advice, this is fantastic. Are you Mel? Because I don't know who Mel's going to be here today. Um, relationship was long distance, but we broke up. It didn't work. He messages me every three to four months. It's like he wants to keep up if I found somebody else. And not unfair. Unfair. See, it's cruel. And here's here's the seduction. I know where y'all go because I've been there. You know, if I speak passionately. I've either seen too much of it and it upsets me because people I love have gone through it. Or I've gone through it myself. But I can promise you, you know, that if they, they're keeping you on retainer, like for themselves, that it's so, so selfish. They're, they just want you. They don't want you to have somebody else. They want to retain. It's control. It's manipulation. It's cruel. If they could have done better, they would have. And now here's where some of you go. Well, why wasn't I enough? And will they, I just got this in the mail um, for a video request. Like uh, now they weren't good with, it, the basic message was they weren't good with me, but now they've found somebody and it looks like they're really happy and they're giving them everything I've ever wanted. Well, one, you don't know that. To everybody always wants to, you know, they break up and they want they want to make it look like, oh my God, now I'm so happy. This person, what? they're going to play themselves out. They're going to be who they really are. That's one. But two, maybe like in the case of this doctor dude, they are going to find their match. They are going to find a woman that, uh, or a man that completely resonates with them. And they're going to understand why there are people, I will say, who aren't inherently trying to be cruel but they're not pulling the trigger and they, they sense that it's not a hundred percent, but they like you or love you enough that they stay with you because there's nothing wrong. It's not bad, but there's something missing and, but they don't know what it is. And so there is that group that honestly we can't hate, but they, but there is a reason when you don't move forward, there's a reason. You may be very conscious of it, like, hey, never intended to move forward with this person. Or, I don't know, I just, I, 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 and they really don't know. But either way, if it was going to happen, it would happen. 
So let's attend to this, right? So it's selfish and here's another equation. No change equals no change, right? Manipulative, selfish, not coming from love. It's haunting. That's what some people call it. And that's in the dating games guide. If y'all, that's, that's, I think it's like $49. It's your flashcard to everything that's going on that feels weird. Don't know what it is. Here it is. So check that out. Um, but I, I want you to understand that your, your hope is what's really hanging you up. And worse yet, by keeping that flame going, every time you pull away, they, they give you hope again because that little part of your mind, that very human part that we all have is thinking, well, maybe they've changed. Maybe they're reconsidering. Like maybe they've played it out with everybody else and they did decide that, you know, they're, maybe they do like me and they're, they're scared or they're whatever, right? But if they don't make a move and if the move doesn't have action and, and behavior that is different, then you are in the same place. So let me go on here. If you don't cut off bad behavior, you are enabling it to be used toward you as well as others. That's, that's true. Let's keep each other accountable and have difficult conversations um, with those who need them. Fabulous. Um, I know you all struggle with this. Um, I do know that. Brian, Pablo, how are you doing, hon? Um, is it best to tell someone you love them even if they don't feel the same way? I want to be honest with her. I understand there won't be a romantic relationship. Ian, why do you want to do that to yourself? I mean, that's a pretty firm statement. I know she's not going to see me. So let me ask you a question. What are you hoping it'll do for you? Because if it does something for you that you can accept and live with, what she laughs, what she scoffs, what if she looks at you with pity? Or what if she humiliates you? Or what if she's very gracious? That'd be nice. Or he's gracious. I don't know what, let's see. Uh, okay, with a her. Um, maybe she's very gracious, but you come away feeling terrible. And she tells you like, oh, I need somebody who's more ambitious or I need somebody taller or I don't know, whatever. If it, if you feel that you will be freed by making this admission and that somehow you will be empowered, fine. But it's got to be a monologue. Okay, so uh, when you get off the show today, go to my videos and put in Susan Winter plus monologue. Hopefully the AI will bring it up. But there is a way to make a concrete statement. You're not going to have a dialogue because you know the dialogue is going to be no thank you. But um, if you are hoping to change her mind because you tell her it's not going to happen, right? I don't think. You're very conclusive in this, right? You know, it's different. When people write me, they go, I don't know. Maybe she likes me. I'm not sure. I would say go for it. You've got nothing to lose. All right. Anybody else with a question, put it in super chat. I'll grab what I can as I'm going. I simply come to choose, but they can't. Okay. What do we have here, everybody? I agree. It's bad behavior. So who here is struggling? Uh, thing is that people after breakups try harder with their next person, usually because they messed up with the previous relationship or really did some growth by then. Sometimes yes, and sometimes they're just the same person. They just switch partners. You know, that's the person that always thinks it's somebody else, right? Like, oh, you know, they, they go through the honeymoon phase and they're like, oh, now this is work. Oh, they're having emotions. Oh, they want me to go to some function I don't want to go to. Oh, now they're asking me what I'm doing on Friday, man. I don't want to go out. You know, I want to be with my girls, whatever. So, yeah, people like to ride the arc of the infatuation and the honeymoon period, but they don't like to. You don't always know that that's going to happen. For people who have a growth mindset, 
they would be inclined to review their behavior in their last relationship and say, hmm, how can I improve on this, right? And as a matter of fact, that's, I have a master class that I'm really excited about that's going to talk about that glitch and all of that to do that, but I'll give you more on that later. Uh, let me see, anything else? M.R. Topar, don't I know you from Clubhouse? Years ago when I did Clubhouse, I might. The name sounds very familiar. Let me see. Okay. Ian, I don't want to change her mind. I just want her to know someone loves her and hope to give hope to give her some hope that she will find someone. I'm not the right man for her. Hmm. I don't know. This is why consultations are important. I can only give you a snapshot of what I can see right now. If you feel that this is a generous offer, then just do it. But you got to be in charge. And the monologue technique that I teach is, um, uh, you've heard me say it before if you've watched the videos. Like it's, it's like you just throw a dart and leave the pub. You're named Ian, so maybe I'm lucky here. You know, you throw a dart and leave the pub, and whatever happens, happens, you know? But it's, it's, it's just a statement because you're not engaging a reaction, right? So if anybody has a question with this, right? Um, now, on your end, here is what's required. You need discipline mentally to not allow your mind to go to the maybe position. Maybe they mean it this time. Maybe they're getting tired of their partner. Maybe they are getting a divorce. Maybe they're thinking of moving and they're just testing the waters. That is your work to do. And that is where you're responsible. Remember, what we know of a person, if you've been involved for a while and they can't, but they want you, that's a no. That's a no. Because what you're looking for is I can't do this because of this. So I need to fix this so I can be with you fully. And if you, they're not doing that, they're not doing it. Then everything else coming out of their mouth or every, and you do have to block them. I think the best way not is to go, yeah, I don't agree in going, um, unless they're like physically violent or abusive, I wouldn't just block. I would say, listen, I'm not having this. We had our time together. You have made your decision. Put the ball back in their court. Spank them. No, they don't get you. Put the book. You know, you made your decision. I need a partner. I need a relationship. I need consistency. I want to be married. I want somebody who's not married. Whatever it is, make your statement. I need somebody who's honest. I need somebody who doesn't cheat. I need somebody who does monogamy. I need somebody who's going to be faithful. Whatever your stuff is. Just say it's not going to work. So therefore, I'm blocking you. Don't contact me. You don't seem to want to do this. Now, they may come back with, I don't know, I want to, I want to, but I can't. I want to, but I can't is not acceptable. All right? There you go. Iced coffee. Anyone else in this situation? So it's a trap, right? Not real love here. I think you're responding, Abdullah. Yep. Uh, there's an age difference, and I'm in unhappy marriage, so I'm not available. Oh, that's good. Well, then this is a friend? Why would you even hesitate to tell a friend? I don't understand. Uh, this is why I'd rather work with you in person. I try to grab as much of this as I can. Nicole, question for Susan. For older women, younger men marriages, I can't believe you're bringing this up. You know next week I launch Older Women, Younger Men in the Dating Games Guide. It's, like a, it's a dating guide for older women and younger men. I can't believe you're bringing this up. It launches on the 15th. Okay. Um, if the older woman has more financial assets, do you think that the older woman should ask for a prenuptial agreement? Damn straight she does. Oh, my God. Anybody who gets married should have this sorted. We, this is not the 1950s. We do not have a stay-at-home person. 
roles and rules have changed. And if you are thinking of marrying anyone, same age, older, younger, who you are going, marriage, if you're writing me from the United States, marriage is a legal contract for responsibility for this other person, their credit card, their payments. Do you know when you get married, you have to have insurance for your partner. If they don't have it, you have to buy it. You have to buy the medical insurance. You have to put them on. They will find out. If you get married, they're going to find out. They're going to, you're, you, like, what if you have a partner that doesn't drive, right? But you, you've got to put them on your insurance policy. I mean, even if they're not intending to drive, I mean, it's horrible. You can't believe what you go through. So I'm asking you. If you have assets, if you have 30,000 and they have 4,000, you got to get a prenup. Here's the reason why. One, it is cumbersome, but it is reality. And I'm going to get to these super chats in just a minute. And I thank you for that. I cannot stress to you enough how important it is. Whether you are a man or a woman, and I don't care if they rail and say, oh, but that's not romantic and we're never going to get divorced. How you feel today is not guaranteed how you're going to feel in 10 years. And while you're still in a good, happy, loving state, get a prenup, get a postnup. No one with assets should marry without this understanding and paperwork. Do it because you're going to end up fighting it over it anyway, and they're going to try and overturn it. Please. I am vigilant about this as one who has made money in my life. I have to be very conscious of things like this. And formerly, men always got this. You know, there are as many women I know paying for deadbeat husbands, exes, as there are men. And it, just do yourself a favor. I can't stress that enough, okay? Get it in paper, get it in writing. And by the way, if this is an able-bodied person and you are in the United States, if you're in Spain, it's separado right away. But if you're an able-bodied person, you can put into your prenup that they're not allowed to petition for maintenance because any person who's working, who was working when you met them, if you get divorced, should not need your money to continue because they're able-bodied and working, okay? Anyway, that's my rant on that. Nicole, please, if you have to, you got to, you've got to get a hold of the new guy. You've got to, you really should book a, con book a consultation with your lawyer, please, please. Okay, one love, hi, yeah. Uh, let's see, oh, I recognize all these names from Instagram. Um, not to use it, $10, thank you so much, my dear. I'm friends with most of my exes, this is great. I wonder if they see my friendship as me keeping them as a backup. I've made it clear I don't go backwards, but they're all single and looking. Optics are not so good. Ask them. If your friends say, listen, I like you now that everything's off. You know, it's, it's, sometimes it's much easier to be friends. I'm, I'm friends with an ex of mine. Okay. Uh, and he's much more enjoyable now that I don't have to take care of him so much as I because I'm a bit of a caretaker in the relationships, which is why I took a big time out, not doing it. I'll take care of all of you, take care of my clients, take care of Mika, not taking care of an adult. No, 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 no. And so now that that person is on their own, I can be friendly. You might want to ask them, what do you think about that? If it's uncomfortable for you, or if in your heart of hearts, and I'm not claiming I'm all that, but if any part of this friendship makes you wonder if there's going to be a repeat performance, it's not. But part of that is you have to keep to that because I'm dear friends with a lot of my other guys that I dated casually. During that um, player time period when I was trying to gain some research, you know, I, I did not have the information to give to any of you had I not done that work. I had really great, loving, kind, sweet boyfriends. Wasn't until I had one that was problematic and then I did all the, the bad boys that I kind of figured out what else is happening in the world. And I'm grateful for that education. <laughs> you can't read about it. You have to live it because you have to know how to get out of it. 
So good for you. Optics are not good. Yeah, maybe not. You've just got to keep training them. You know, uh, let's see. What is this? Peaches and cream. One ninety nine. Thank you for that. That's so sweet. I asked my question in the chat above. Let's find you peaches and cream in the chat above. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bear with me, everyone. How far is above? Maybe you mean below. Good Lord. Maybe my mods can help me on this. I can't seem to find peaches and cream. Maybe she's below. We are going to come back to you, peaches. I can't seem to find this. Super chat from Robert Carter. Thank you, my dear. Five dollars. Thank you, Robert. So happy to have my men here. Just got out of a relationship where he told me he didn't love me. Had had me shun friends he left when I took control back and met some past friends. Oh, I'm so glad you're out of that. Um, listen, I've had people that were really jealous of my friends because they thought that my friends could be former lovers, you know, or could be a potential lover. They thought that my friends liked me, my male friends liked me as more than a friend friend. And um, that kind of controlling relationship I'm glad that you're out. I am. You know, in a healthy relationship, we can have our friends. And in a healthy relationship, we know that we are being in right order and that we're not making our partner feel uncomfortable. There is a protocol to visit friends and still be respectful to our partner and not ever make them scared or wonder or worried. And then we need from them the trust that, yeah, you trust me and you know that I'm not doing anything wrong. So I need to have a life where I can have freedom to have my friends. These are all parts of the agreements that go into creating a relationship. And if you don't have an agreement with your existing partner, start to hammer one out. I'm sure it's implicit. I'm sure you're functioning. Listen, you're going to know what the agreements are when you start to have a, a fight, because that means we're both of a different mindset about this topic. So I like to get that those agreements out of the way in the beginning so that we are on the same vibe of where we're going here and why we're going here together. Oh, jeez. I know who you are. Linda Brown. Oh, my God. Again, $100. I can't, I can't believe it. This woman is amazing. Linda. <laughs> Oh my God, I don't even know how to thank you. This is not she, this is not a one-off. This lady comes by and does this quite often. Okay, so thankfully here we have a question for you. All right, my love. My ex-husband was like this. I wanted a divorce, but he didn't because he wanted financial stability. Thank you, Miss Susan, for your great work. Linda, I love you. Thank you so much. I so appreciate people such as yourself. Um, you know, I talk about power, I talk about financial inequity, and I talk about that because I've lived it. And for all the, you know, the guy websites that, that have tried to accuse ladies of like, when I wrote 98 Dates in Nine Months, here's what I learned. I remember it had like 567 comments in the first 20 minutes. I mean, I was attacked and accused as a broke blogger who wanted dinner, a free meal. I was so offended because I kept thinking, oh my God, you have no idea who you're talking to or where I come from or what I've achieved in my life before you see me on this little thing. There are women who have money and whether you are married to them or you live with them or you feel that you have to help them, this is a very female thing. And I must tell you, I did an article a long time ago, which will be in the older women, younger men guide about, you know, the source being the source and the new gigolo. There are men who target women. And yeah, it's not just in the South of France back in the 1940s. I mean, this is like a thing. 
because women are excelling in their careers and we know we've got to cut it. And we've kind of lived through the illusion that now maybe we're not going to have a prince come up and take us on his little white horse and take care of us for the rest of his life or our life. And so we are aware now that we have to cut it on our own. So we must be protective not only of our heart, but of our finances. Now, again, in Spain, there's Junto and Separado. And, and I know a little bit about this, okay, because I've had a Spanish partner. And so Separado is normal. <laughs> they, well, you know, they got a new constitution. They think it through a little bit differently. Like, hey, what I've got, I've got. What you've got, you've got. You can make it very fair. But we tend to help even if we're casually dating. This was the old thing that guys did for the young little damsel in distress. Oh, I can introduce you to somebody in the movie business. Oh, I can take you to that restaurant. Oh, you've never been on a plane before. I can take you. That was part of the package. But as a woman, and I think most people that love themselves were like, I'd like you to love me for me. Yeah, I have this and I'm happy to share it, but I don't want it to be the reason. So Linda, Thank you. You know, we all have to stand on our own. If we have a partner to stand by our side, good. Because there'll be moments that we need to lean back. And all of you today trying to figure out whether you are going to continue having hope in this person that's done you wrong and can't, I can't. Oh, the manufactured, I can't. Or that they stand up and be, uh, yeah, and 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 let's let's look at it on the other end. If you support them, you're disabling them. And I've learned that one firsthand. Okay, Linda, thank you, thank you. Always happy to speak with you offline if you want to communicate with me. Ian Wood, five dollars. Thank you, my dear. And I'm sorry if I misinterpreted it for you because I wasn't sure where you were coming from. And again, I try to do my best when I just grab a comment like that. And Robert, you're going to do better. You're going to have somebody that trusts you. I know there's a lot of stuff coming up here. I hope I don't miss any of that. Let's see. Um, tons of love to you. My growth for you. Thanks, Susan from Stephen C. Let me see. Who's here? T. Sammy, 999. Thank you. Thank you, T. Sammy. Oh, you look like a cool guy. Look at that. Oh, my, oh, my buff men are in the house. T. Sammy, thank you. If you have a question, I hope my gals will find it. Um, let's see, who do we have here? Stephen C, 999. Stephen, thank you so much. Love my men. Um, you will never hear me respond to anybody like, oh, men just do that. Men are like this. I love men. I need men in my life. They are rational when I can be emotional. When I tend to think of, oh, but maybe they're going to be unhappy. They'll go like, Susan, you're really unhappy. I'll go, oh, yeah. You're right. I forgot me. I forgot me. That, is that right, Nika? Yes, Nika says. Yes, Nika. Don't forget yourself. That's from Nika. Is that right, Nika? Yes. Don't forget yourself in the equation. While you're busy loving them, please love yourself in the process. And those of you who are trying to cut free from this pesky, positive hope that maybe, maybe they want to get back together. Maybe that is about me. Maybe they do adore me. Oh my goodness. Deborah, hi Susan, watched you on Jonathan Asley's channel. I love Jonathan. Is he not cool? Thank God we have a voice of reason. You know, I mean, I love this, right? Um, you're fabulous and add value to my life. I appreciate you. Love from Zimbabwe. Whoa, whoa. I know I have an international audience. I know that. By the way, I'll be in Singapore, my bucket, bucket list city, uh, Saigon, Bangkok, where else? Kuala Lumpur, just for a few hours. But I'll be in Singapore. And uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be deciding whether it's the end of January or middle of February, because I'm going on a cruise to that area. And uh, so I just want you all to know that, that I will be having a meet and greet in Singapore. And this is where you'll see me. Those of you who write to me, 
uh, or who are on my newsletter, you will be getting updates. I will also be posting it here. I know I have people who want to work with me one on one. And um, so I try to visit my foreign audiences. <laughs> Never gone anywhere in the United States. Oh my gosh. I've had them come to Core Club. That was it. Uh, so I have to have an event in the US because I'm always having them abroad. So thank you, everyone. I haven't gone to Zimbabwe. Don't think I'm going yet. Um, peaches and cream still can't find it. That happens sometimes. No idea where. Peaches and cream, write it again. We're looking for you. Uh, let's see. Here we go. It's not in my laptop. It's not Gwen. It's either. She's thinking it psychically. We're going to get there. Uh, Gwen Sharps. He told me he didn't feel romantic towards me but treated me like a boyfriend, go on dates, etc. I'm very confused. T. Salmon, honey, thank you for this. Okay, very simple, the answer's in the question. My thing is, I'm picking up from this, you want a romance. This one doesn't feel romantically towards you. That equals no go, no go. That's the answer, don't overthink it. The fact that, see, here's the thing, and I'm glad you're talking about this because mixed messages. We are talking about mixed messages today. Can't be with you, don't wanna let you go. Mixed message, right? I think your friend, and we have to look at this as your platonic friend, enjoys your company. Doesn't see you as a romantic viability. Maybe they know themselves. Maybe what you want, maybe you want monogamy, maybe you want to trust them, maybe you want somebody that's not sleeping around a lot, maybe you want, I don't know, whatever you want. They know they can't do it, but they like your company. The only one who gets to decide whether that's okay to see them is you. You have to decide, am I happier seeing them? Not just in the time I see them, but when I don't see them? Or am I better off to not see them at all? If what you want is isolated only to romantic and all they're giving you is friendship, eventually, I know, I know, I know humans, you're going to try. You're going to try and make it work and you're going to repress like, yeah, I'm a, and you're going to hope maybe the more they're with me, they'll get to fall in love with me because the more they see me, they'll realize what a great person I am. Maybe they're just scared. Maybe they're resistant. Maybe they were hurt by their last boyfriend, blah, 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 blah. But then when you get to the bottom of that, you're like, oh, not even being nice to myself here. If you can be friends and you know real friends, fine. If you can't be friends, don't let them be friends. Don't do not do those dates, right? The fake dates, okay. Well, Ian is being very good to his friend. Uh, Jillian, you are an amazing friend. It's possible that she could see you that way if you open up, which under the current circumstances is not right for either one of you. Nika, I know CC, we love Nika. Uh, let me see, is there something I've missed there? All my Pomeranians are talking to Nika, yes! Nika's got a little bit of husky in her, not a lot. She's a second generation Pomsky, but she looks more like, you look like a Pom. You look like a shrunk Samoyed, Nika. That's what she looks like. My ex-boyfriend from decades ago have gotten back in touch. I, Oh, okay. He likes my posts, but no other recent contact. He, is he still interested? Claims he misses me. Dee Dee, the only question you need to ask is, do you miss him? Are you longing for a check-in? Here's the thing. Here's how it could, it might be worth exploring. If time has passed and somebody from your past that treated you well, but it didn't work out, something external, like we went our different ways after college, uh, you know, we moved, uh, whatever, uh, I don't know, they were into rock climbing and I was into reading, it didn't work, whatever. And they reconnect with you. You could, you could entertain the possibility of a conversation or seeing them and figuring out what it's all about. If somebody that you've dated says they miss you, that is kind of, that's a temperature check. Yeah, you know that. So the only question is, what do you want to do about it? But remember, 
everybody here that's in this group is of a growth mindset. Not everybody is a growth mindset. You might meet them and find, yeah, now I know why we didn't work out. It was not going to work out. But if you got to scratch that itch, go ahead and do so. But remember what you went through in the past. That's a good barometer, okay? Um, let's see. Yes, we love uh, Marie, uh, Jonathan Asley's new partner. That's great. Okay. Oh, this is good. Nafthusa says, do you know that if you place... Um, Numerals or special characters or smiles that can block a message. Ian Wood, thank you for this, Tech Girl. Why is love in real life a failed emulation of what we see in TV shows and movies and cartoons? Me, I am a poly girl and monogamy is just not for me. Okay, cool. You are in a growing minority. You are. You get a piece of everything. I wouldn't complain. You get everything. You're poly. Now, you just have to find somebody of your age group, and it's more generational, to be honest with you. There are always outliers in other um, age groups, but this is more kind of a Gen Z thing right now, young millennial. Um, you've got, <laughs> you actually have 100% of the pie, you know. So also understand that life is changing, people are changing. I love the fact that people can be honest about whatever they are. I've been begging for this for some, I don't know, like since I started dating, I think. When I started dating, remember, I come from the courtship era. Um, it was normal. I had, to, I had to fight off marriage. My goal was to try and stay single and, and live with somebody. That was, I didn't, I, you know, I looked at that whole thing like, oh my gosh, once I get in, I can never get out. I think for me, because I didn't want children and I knew that, I knew that, I, first of all, I was never going to have kids and break up a home or be the reason of some sullen housewife that didn't want that. But it was not acceptable to not want it. So the best I could do is tread water with good boyfriends that didn't need to get married. But things have changed so much now. You have to realize that many people are just desperate to find somebody that they can be involved with, that they can trust and remain with. And they're not interested in dipping in and out and, you know, trying this and trying that. They just really like, wow, I did that inadvertently. Like millennials with hookups, many of them are just trauma exhausted. They're just like, oh my God, why is this so impossible? So, I think you're going to do better in today's world than many of the other people, okay? And we're here for you. And welcome. Everybody is welcome to this channel. Everybody who's respectful and thoughtful. And I commend everybody. And I, I wish Mel would show up and maybe, oh, I can't believe it. Oh, I just read this. Hi, Susan. It's Mel. Thank you again for this live session. I think of him less each day but how to fully move on from the pain. Constant reminders at work, mutual friends. That's where I met. Oh, it is so hard. I, I do, I do, I do agree. Mel, I'm so glad you're here. Um, th this is one of my great joys is when somebody discovers this, uh, that, uh, you know, they discover that, oh my God, she did my video or I write them back. Cause you guys, you'll write me, but then you don't check to see that I've written you back. So this is great. One of the hardest issues about moving on is when you must live with constant reminders of that person that you still want and still love that it hurts you because you still love them. Okay. And you're getting constant reminders from the people at work. Oh, what happened with Jack? Are you okay? Whatever. But you got to realize this is somebody married who played with you and had no intention of doing any more than that. And now I'm so sorry to say this, but when it's inconvenient, you're, you're fighting with them, right? You're complaining about the lack of respect is inconvenient. So they don't want to deal with that. I mean, what a shame person, really. Look at it, look at that. I treat you horribly, horribly. you complain about it and you're the problem, that's gaslighting. Okay. There are a million things wrong with this human being. And I, I'm just one voice and I can't wait to see everybody else. Going, rah, 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 rah. So Mel, 
let's talk about why do you feel you're going to get constant reminders, right? Mental discipline, interrupt that mental pattern. You didn't lose something. You never had this one and nobody's going to have this person. And the one that has, I'm sorry for whoever is married to him right now. Come on. I wish she were here. <laughs> Boy, oh, would that be my husband? Oh, he works with somebody named Mel. So here's the thing. Why is this person worthy of your love? I know you love. I know love is independent of their reciprocating. But why would you want to love somebody that is so tarnished? And so rather than interpreting it as pain, I want you to flip the script, okay? I want you to start to think, God, I did good. I did a good job. I left that person. Every time they remind me of it, I think I am so lucky to be out of that. I'm so lucky now to be free. I'm so lucky to be done with, are they going to text me back? Am I going to see them? Are they going to call me? Is it ever going to work out? Can I get them to love me? Can I get them to pay attention? I'm never, ever, ever going to feel that way again. The buck stops here. That's what you put in your head when Alice at the water cooler says, oh, so did you sort it out with Jack? You go, yeah. I'm so lucky to be on the other side of it. And that is your mission statement. If anybody knows, and maybe they don't, but it's got to be to yourself. Thank you, God, that I'm on the other side of this now. Now I want you to look at his flaws. Yeah. Yep. Now I want you to look at the whole thing. Okay. I know there's more people here. 11 euros. Thank you so much, Katya. I thought I recognized you. My gorgeous Katya. How are you doing, honey? Susan, I'm listening to all of this where I've been for so long and I'm happier to see it is a past me than if I was actually in a walking on eggshells fighting for my respect relationship. No. Katya, I've worked with a number of times. Met her. She hung out with us when we were in uh, Croatia. <sighs> Many of my clients follow me across the world, <laughs> I have to tell you. But... Um, First, before we left, before she left, I normally work with you to try and get it right. I may be one of the, I don't think everybody does that. And to my fault, sometimes I've had you in a little longer than maybe we could have. But I know that there's no way you can leave somebody, leave, 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 leave. And leave in your mind if you think there was a fragment of hope. So I will, more times than not, unless it's abusive, all right, unless it's just so clearly, like so negative, if there's stuff there but it's not right, I will work with you to try to see if a little bit of changing this and that can't bring them forward. I try to see what it is before we call it quits because for somebody to just tell you no, but there's some stuff that's working, you're not going to feel, you're not going to feel like you got the answer and you're still going to live in hope. We have to see them fail repetitively and get really clear on, see, here's the thing. It's the dream, right? It's the dream. You remember how they were. Humans work like this. But if I had it then, why can't I get it now? I had it. They loved me before. They were nice to me before. They cared for me before. They slept with me before. Why can't I get that back? I had it. What do I have to do to make it come back? That train is the seduction. It's the charisma. It's the narcissist. It's whatever, however they play. That's the, that's the fake them to get what they want. Then they hook you. Then they're done. Game over. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that there are humans that do this. But maybe if you see it, you'll be less tempted to glamorize it in your mind and give them the benefit of a doubt one more time. So thank you for this, Katya. Uh, let's see, who do we have here? Oh, Jillian, $10. Thank you, love. Hi, Susan. Nicole asked this, and I'm curious as well. In my 40s, my concern 
will a younger man still be attracted to me when I'm in my 60s or 70s? I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll let you know because I may actually try to date. And chances are, when we're going to attract an 80 year old guy, I don't want to be carrying his tubes around, you know, and his like a little oxygen tank. I don't know. I'll let you know. Do the younger men stay attracted as the woman ages? Let me be real. Some don't. The one you want will. Here's the upfront thing that you don't, you, you can't know until you've been loved, really loved by a good person who happens to be younger. Right? This is not a let me check it off the bucket list. I did a three-way. Let me do an older woman. It's not that. These are not the guys you want. You want the kind of guys that have a growth mindset that are bored shitless with women their age because the women that they're meeting or that they're seeing are either so self-involved with their Instagram photos and their, you know, filtering or their collection of their MS bags or their CNBC seen all throughout the Mediterranean or the games that they play. They're so mentally starving for solidity, power, confidence, clarity, and a no game, authentic, here's what I am, here's what I do, here's what I'm looking for, here's how I do it. If you like it, cool, if you don't, great. That's what a woman, 40, 40s, the best decade ever. The rose is in full bloom. You got your career, you got your confidence, you've had your failures, you've survived them and you've got your wins and you're gonna have 40s, the most glorious, beautiful time period ever with the greatest, you'll get more confidence in your 50s, you'll get it challenged in your 60s, by the time you get to your 70s, you'll go, holy shit, what's happening, but you're still gonna have it all together. Younger men want clarity. They're exhausted by the games. And if you know who you are and know what you want, they, they see you're older, okay? This is not fooling them. They know you're older and these guys do not put their, see, we have been inculcated to believe throughout society. And it's true because most men work like this. Um, how many of the haters have come up? You hit the wall. You hit the wall. She hit the wall at 50. I'm like, dude, I'm older than 50, but thanks. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. So there are men that only choose according to looks because it elevates their status. And she's no different than them buying a car. This is not this guy. This kind of a guy who wants an older woman is looking for content and emotional quality and stability. So their value system is less on that. So basically my answer is those that are the ones you want to date, no, they don't care. They're, they're not, they have preferences, but they're there for something of far greater importance to them. You know, there are people that are, uh, uh, is it sapiosexual? And they can date horrifically unattractive, you know, what I call pug ugly people because they're so fed by the intelligence. It's like that is their turn on, right? Or somebody with a great sense of humor. You know, comedians are not the best looking guys out there. You might have noticed, right? I mean, every once in a while you see a buff comedian, but you're like, oh, where did you come from? Right? So, but they're funny. And so every person has things that offset. So every lady that's 40 and dating, best advice I have for you, keep doing your routine, keep looking good, keep trying to stay current, but understand that, that the mindset that you offer and who you are, you keep growing as a person and you will be attractive to others. You know, if we keep um, current and alive and growing and vibrant, those who like those qualities will be looking at that, not your externals. That was quite a rant. So next week I launch Older Women, Younger Men. You will get more information there and it'll be on sale for everybody in the beginning. Now that I'm reading all that, I'm listening to all of that, I'm like, I'm out of that state. I couldn't be happier. No one deserves what I was going through and I am so through, that's Katya. Uh, it should appear now. Peaches and Cream was still looking for you. He told me he didn't feel romantic. Okay, that's T. Sammy. 
I've highlighted it for Susan. We don't understand why you can't read it. Your other comments, let's see. Okay, Jillian's given advice too. Peaches and cream, here we go. Why did this unattractive surgeon ghost me after our first, hang on, where did you go? Don't, don't jump, the page jumped. Oh, where did it go? Oh Lord God. Why did this, oh my God, the page just jumped on me. Bear with me. Okay, everybody get a cup of coffee, go get a glass of water, something happened. Where did this go? The page just jumped. Peaches, now the, the message was retracted. Okay, that's why it jumped. Okay, um, Mel, good memories, intrusive thoughts. The difficulty is I've never seen that bad side of him. Oh, honey, the, I can't. That's the bad side. Do you understand that? What kind, what, what, for, I'm sorry. The fact that he's married, God almighty, this is like glaring. What do you mean you've never seen the bad side of him? Dude's married. That's bad. That's bad. That's a no win. That's a no win for you. That's it. What do you mean? Like, how bad does he have to be? Come and like spank you around it? I mean, that's, that, that's the bad side. It's really simple. Oh my God. Uh, and when the co workers and friends claims he's been talking to and quite possibly seeing other women, oh my gosh. Okay. You need urgent care. You need to check in to the Susan Winter Urgent Care Clinic ASAP. Mel, come on. Okay, it, it, everybody, are you with me on this? How much worse is worse? Like, okay, so this is this is this is where we go wrong. Okay, this is our fault, right? We keep moving the goalpost of what is acceptable, and we move it so many times to allow them to continue their bullshit that what happens is we start to forget the, uh, the big things like uh, you're not being with me, you're not making time for me, you're in and out of the relationship, you're hot and cold. Oh, oh by the way, uh, you're married and you're seeing other people. I mean, that is the bad behavior, okay? That's the bad behavior. Seduction is powerful, charisma is powerful. If any of you are in sales, you know how to turn it on. These people are good salespeople. They get what they want. I'm so sorry. The guy is bad to the bone when it comes to you. I don't know how else to say it. Okay, sweetie. All right. She reposted the message from Ugly Peaches. Okay. All right. B, thank you. Peaches, finally coming back to you, my dear. Here we go. Why did this unattractive surgeon ghost me after our date last year? I'm well-educated, attractive, classy, feminine. He recently married a girl overseas. Why her and not me? He gave no reason. No, no. You, okay. This happens every day in all sorts of situations. For whatever reason that you don't know, and with one date, they're not required to tell you. It'd be nice if they said, I don't feel a connection. But one, congratulations on high self-esteem. You think... Should have been on peaches and cream. You know, come on. And you're a surgeon. You should want all this, right? But he didn't. And he took somebody else overseas. I don't know. What's he got overseas? Maybe it's different. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a, it's a color of the skin or it's the exoticism of this person. Or maybe maybe there's something very traditional about his background where there, there's a religious component. Or maybe it's just somebody that he finds incredibly tantalizing that aligns with him, you had one date. Now, here's where we have to do kind of a mental health check on you. One date, you've been bothered for a year about this? One date, am I reading this properly? You can't give them that kind of power. A date is what Nika does when she goes out in the street and they sniff each other's butts. That's about the extent of what that means, right? It's when you get into the second, third, fourth, you get into a relationship and you write something like this. Now we have something to deal with because you were led to believe that something was occurring and they cut you off and they don't give you a reason. For you, dear person, Peaches, and thank you, B and Gwyneth, for hunting for this, um, you have to do closure for yourself. And this applies to everyone that isn't given a reason. 
Um, and if you can't find a reason, choose the most logical. They weren't feeling it. We weren't a match. They wanted something that they sensed I didn't have. And if I don't have it, I probably can't develop it. Or you could just learn to say, oh, didn't work, next. That is more of a mentality of resilience that we need to develop in this time period. This whole concept of next is important because my worry is that so, listen, dating and relationships are difficult because there's no way you can't take it personally. It's you. It's you being rejected. How can you not take it personally? I get it. And we all read, I'll get the four agreements, don't take it personally. Yeah, come on. And if you slept with them, kissed them, or led on by them, of course, of course you're going to take it personally. However, for your mental health and for your survival, you are going to have to come up with an automatic blanket statement to give yourself closure in, in, in environments where you don't have closure, where you don't know the answer. And it's got to be as simple as, must not have been the right person for me. Maybe I need to thank my higher power for guiding me away from this person. Looks great. Surgeon, yeah, looks like a great lifestyle. We don't know what goes on there. I'm watching a documentary now on Army Hammer. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What you think you see in somebody is not always who they are. And let me say, he hasn't currently been accused of anything, but I thought that was nonsense until I started, you know, listen, there's the way things look. You see a couple together. I remember Christy Brinkley's husband, this beautiful blonde guy from, you know, out in the Hamptons. I'm like, oh, God, they're such a gorgeous couple. They look mm -hmm. so happy. Things are never what they appear to be. And we can't, I, I think in your case, you let the dream run away from you and you infused this human being with all this what I call the dream, you, you, you know, like, oh my gosh, the surgeon and we can be so happy and I'm intelligent, I'm educated, I can see myself in that lifestyle, but no, that's not a connection. So I thank you for this. Now, um, this is a big topic. Uh, yeah, our brains don't even fully develop till we're 25 tech girl. That's cool that you're aware and learning about yourself. So I'm very proud of everyone in this group today. Oh, he has Asperger's. I don't understand him. Peaches and cream just, you know, can, can we accept it's a no-go? Can we just say next? There's a lot taken in here, okay? Sometimes it just doesn't work. I commend all of you for looking at yourself but I'd begin to do the next stage after that. If you're caught in this thing and you're oh, bemoaning the fact that they can't be the person you want, maybe we need to start to correct who you're looking at and why you're attracted to this type of person. Why, when you begin to see these behaviors, it still captures you and why it still seduces you even when you see that it's not working, why do you hang on? Because that's the pivotal point that you have control over where your scenario will begin to change. I'm going to be doing a master class with a, uh, a doctor, a PhD friend of mine, and we're constructing it now. And we're still working through, but this is what I love is that, you know, I don't talk about attachment theory. So many of you asked me about that. I'm very honest about what I know about what I don't, and I'm not going to go into clinical stuff when I'm not that, but my doctor, uh, Dr. Heather Hans will be, and we're going to discuss this because what we're talking about is the glitch. You're there. They're not and you can't extricate yourself. You're waiting for them to release you. They're not going to do that because they're selfish. They're selfish. They want to have you in case they want you. Yeah? So here we go. Ten. Ten. Thank you. Queen with a, queen with a peen. Okay. I think I'm saying this right. 
Uh, Ten, thank you so much. Hello, Susan. I'm so grateful for you. My ex and I broke up and he unfairly blames me. I've written a closure letter, but I'm unsure if I should, I think you mean set the record straight. It mostly feels dishonest to me. Um, I don't know enough about your story. I'm going to try and give it a broad sweep. Question. Did your ex ever take responsibility for their side of the street? If it is indicative of them to have a default to always blame the other person, you may not be able to undo this, okay? Because they're blaming you. This is what I call the bad review, and it sucks. It sucks. I've had people I've been so good to. <laughs> and then when I pull away, finally, because it's like, I'm not having this, I'm not having this behavior anymore. They turn around and make me bad and wrong and find things like, oh, I'm, I'm this and I'm that. And it'll never work out. You know, just, it's like, dude, accept it. But they don't want to lose. Their ego does not want to lose. So they must destroy you. So if your partner never took responsibility for their side of the street, this is just another example of that. All right. And I don't know what you're trying to do in this letter. I've written a closure letter. Um, I don't know who broke up with whom. If you are done, if you're done, see, this is this is why I'm like, you know, this is why I ask you all to just work with me because wow, I'm guessing here. If you're done, write a polite letter that thanks them for their involvement and gives some brief overview as to what they think the problem is. That's your way out. If you're just trying to be sweet and kind. If you need closure for yourself, there's work that has to be done to figure out what that is, okay? Because I, don't, I, I just don't, I, I want to help you, but I just don't know enough from where this is going. Don't send anything you don't feel 100% confident about, right? Always think of how will this affect them. Take the high road where you can. I've had to extricate myself from business situations where I would so love to go off on these people, how unethical and how I would never work with them again in a million years. And I just write a very light letter, excluding myself from all events that could have anything to do with these people whatsoever to just keep pace and keep going. It's not worth it. I just, you know, I, I don't know your connection. I don't know how this intersects with your life. When all else fails, do a polite Thank you, and I wish you well. I mean, if you can, okay? So now we're going into overtime. I bet B and Gwyneth want to finish their dinner. Jillian is here. Rejection is protection and redirection. Go oh, from gotcha. All the way from Amsterdam. Yes, baby. I love this. Okay. I love the fact that you're all talking to each other. Uh, thank you for answering my question. Peaches and cream. I try to do the best I can. This is why I say I'm trying so hard to help all of you at the same time and make sure that you do this. I've watched some Manosphere videos and it's scary how much they hate women. It's not right. You look lovely, Susan. I know they hate me, but you know what? They they twist my words. I can't, I can't do anything about it. You know, it's funny. I've actually um, gone to legal counsel. They don't have enough money for me to sue them. <laughs> I'm not going to waste, I'm not going to waste. They're not a company. They don't have enough money to go after. And you know what? I don't want my SEO attached to this. Part of being a voice is knowing they're going to hate you. Then you're doing your job, right? And if they're going to twist everything you say, I like men. I don't think they should always be stuck with alimony or maintenance if they've got an able, but I don't. And I don't think women should do that either. I don't think either one should do that, but you know, I don't think it should be automatic. I don't think automatically the kids should, you know, I mean, it's just, we've got to look at individual cases and upgrade everything. And these things, they don't, I say them, they don't want to hear it. That's okay. And you know, what's the saddest thing about that that, re that, that really bothers me underneath all that hatred is fear. There are only two emotions, love and fear. That's it. Hatred is fear. Anger is fear. They are hurt, hurting, and don't have the tools to get the love they want. Most of those 
poor guys were left by some woman that's like, dude, you're not growing, you're not working with me, it's not about sitting on the couch, and they leave. And these guys are devastated. And they are not of the mindset to know how to correct themselves. And that hurts me so much because in the mess of all those guys that hate women so much, they've been hurt. And people like me would love to help them to find something happy and just like that whatever happened, maybe she was horrible to you. I'm so sorry. It's not every woman. It isn't. And they're not going to get it because if they stay in that hatred of hating the whole group, they're never going to find it. They're just not. It's a heavy burden. But, you know, anyway, enough of that. Jillian, thank you so much. Love that rejection. Yep, that's good, isn't it? Okay, Pippa. Hi, Nicole. You're talking to each other. Oh, Disco Queen. This is the sanest and smartest place on the internet. Thank you all. Thank you all. I'm so pleased. I have to tell you that I've learned from the different networks I've worked with. You know, I've never once done a press release or have I, I think I hired a publicist once. He got me one thing I couldn't even use. He did nothing. But every time people call me, whether it's New York Times or it's ABC or whatever, I will turn to the booker and say, just out of curiosity, because I don't push, I don't ask, I don't request, and I don't pitch. Why? They say, you're the most trusted source out there. So my goal has been to try to tell you the truth as best I can. I have my opinion, but I also know human nature. I am not an oracle. I'm a human being. And this is why I love your input. But I do, because of B and Gwyneth and Jillian and different people that come on this site, we try to create a safe environment for all of you to have support not one person said anything horrible about Mel being involved with a married man. Thank you. Because we're not here to attack people for the sophistication of the game played on them. We're here to educate them how to see the game and extricate themselves with grace and confidence. No matter how smart we are, the heart, the human heart, is vulnerable and can be captured. So the point is that we support each other. It could have been any one of us. Any one of us could be led on by somebody who's really good at their game. So thank you for being so supportive. Mel, thank you for showing up today. Linda Brown. Your generosity is astounding. Astounding. Thank you so much. Everyone here, thank you for your commentary. Thank you for supporting each other. I will be back next week. Please continue to send me your video requests. SusanWinter.net. You go to the consultation page. No, you go to the contact page. If you want to work with me, just book a session. Please. I'm going to have fewer and fewer as time goes on. And I will be telling you about the future things. And next week we launch Older Women, Younger Men. I'll be talking about that in the live show. Write me your questions. Maybe I'll do something on it. Uh, thank you, Susan. Appreciate the support. And thank you, everyone, for being so kind and respectful despite my situation. We can all fall in love with somebody that we shouldn't because they make it so enticing to do so. But we're here to help you when you get there, right? Okay, everyone. Love you all. Carrie Photo, everyone, the one, Tiger Lily, Lil, uh, Linda Brown, thank you. Awesome video. Thank you so much, Miss Susan B. Love, 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 love. You're really the best on YouTube. I got the best people. How could I How could I be bad? I got the best people here. Miss Topper, thank you. Everyone else, Mr. Topper. Okay. Jack, everyone who contributed, everyone who's supporting everybody else, all the hearts. Nika and I, thank you. Much love to you. We'll see you next week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye now.